Hello again. We have already covered kinematics and special relativity, but dynamics is a relevant part of physics that also involves objects moving at relative velocities and colliding. So let's find how dynamics looks like in special relativity. The building blocks of dynamics are the three laws of Newton. They rely in the concept of momentum. The first law states that in an absence of external forces, the momentum of a particle remains constant. The second law states that the rate of change of the momentum of that particle is proportional to the external force. And the third law is also based on the conservation of momentum in a collision. But the mathematical expression for momentum can't be the one from Newton. If we apply a constant force to an object, in Newtonian physics the acceleration increases linearly. But this can lead to a speed that can easily be greater than the speed of light, which we know is wrong. Remember when we talked about proper time and the twins paradox? There we saw that a constant force can't lead to a constant acceleration. Let's see an example of an elastic collision between two particles. Particle 1 with mass m has a beta of 3 fifths in the x-axis. Particle 2 with a mass of 2m is at rest. We know from Newtonian physics that after the collision, particle 1 will bounce back with a beta of negative 1 fifth, while particle 2 will move forward with a beta of 2 fifths. The momentum before the collision is 3 fifths mc, the momentum after the collision is minus 1 fifth mc plus 4 fifths mc, which is 3 fifths mc, so momentum is conserved. And let's now use Einstein's transformation equations for the velocity to see how that reads in a reference frame moving with the particle 1. In that reference frame, it is particle 1 that is at rest and particle 2 that is moving with 3 fifths of c to the left. If we transform the initial momentum, we get that from the second reference frame, it is minus 1.20 mc. If we do the same for the momentum after the collision, we get minus 1.24, which is not the same. So momentum is not conserved, which can be that momentum is conserved in one reference frame and not in the other reference frame. This goes against the principle of relativity that all laws of physics are invariant, they are the same. So we can see that Newtonian momentum is not valid anymore. We need a relativistic generalization of momentum. To find it, let's think about how we represent momentum in classical physics. It is a vector that is tangent to the trajectory of a particle in space. If the motion is in a straight line, it will point in that direction. But if the motion is curved, it will be tangent to the curve. In relativity, the trajectory of a particle is represented not in space, but in spacetime. We draw the warp line of the particle Let's go back to Minkowski spacetime diagram then, and let's define the relativistic momentum as the vector tangent to the world line of the particle. In Newtonian physics, momentum is the mass times the derivative of the vector position with respect to time, so dr vector over dt. Here, the differential displacement is not the r, but ds, the displacement in four-dimensional spacetime. This ds is a four-dimensional vector that has components dt, dx, dy, and dz. So relativistic momentum will have to be the mass times the derivative of the spacetime displacement ds with respect to time. But which time? ds is an invariant, but if we divide it by dt being t a specific reference frame, which is that reference frame? Instead of using dt, we will be using d tau, the proper time of the particle, remember. We will write the generalization momentum as a four vector that is 
a vector in spacetime defined as pt equals to m dt d tau, px equal to m dx d tau, py equals to m dy d tau, and pz equals to m dz d tau. Now, because we can relate the proper time interval with a time interval in a different reference frame as d tau equal to square root of 1 minus beta squared times dt, we can rewrite the components of the relativistic momentum as This, in the limit of small velocities, recovers Newtonian momentum, as expected. Something we can do now is to write the full momentum in the primed reference frame. P sub t prime is m dt prime over d tau. But dt prime is gamma times dt minus v over c squared times x, which is gamma m times dt over d tau minus gamma mv over c squared dx over d tau. But this, this is gamma pt minus v over gamma c squared px, p sub t, and this you can take that the other component minus transform gamma as v over c squared p sub x. Now it's an exercise for you to find how the x, y, and z components of the relativistic momentum transform and verify that they are the, these results here. Okay, now that we have written relativistic momentum, let's check that it is conserved in a collision. We'll do that for the general case. So this is the conservation of the of x component of the relativistic momentum. This is the conservation of the t component of the relativistic momentum in one reference frame. Now let's go to the other reference frame and see if by satisfying that it's conserving one reference frame, it is also conserved in the other reference frame. So I have to write here P1x prime plus P2x prime minus P3x prime minus P3, four prime. So this is the initial momentum of particle one and particle two and the final momentum of particle one and particle two. I will just substitute that transformation for the first case. This is going to be gamma parenthesis px minus v pt, and that is going to be for one and for one plus p gamma gamma parenthesis p two x minus v p two t minus minus gamma p three x minus v p3t minus gamma p4x minus vp4t. Now I'm going to group everything that has this gamma, so p1x plus p2x minus p3x minus p4x, and now here I'm going to group everything that has gamma and velocity. So gamma velocity bracket. This is negative P1t minus P2t minus and minus that is positive P3t and positive P4t. Now look at this bracket. This is just the conservation of the x component of the relativistic momentum in the S reference frame which we know that that is conserved and this is just the conservation of the t component of the relativistic momentum in the s uh, reference frame, which we know that is conserved, so this is equals to zero, and yes, the relativistic momentum is conserved in the other reference frame. So we have that in relativity, momentum is a full vector, and momentum defined this way is conserved in all reference frames. We also know how momentum is transformed from one inertial frame to another. So, think four dimensionally and... It's perfect! You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally! Right, right, I have a real problem. May the science be with you. <laughs>